for the rest of them, we need two more loops, okay? So the first loop is looping through each key, or looping through the key list, all right? So remember, once we hit, if we're, we're doing momentum, then we need to loop through the associated keys in the momentum. So for J in key list I, okay, because we're looping through the I, th we're, we're, <laughs> I know it's kind of complicated, but we're looping through the, the I th element of key list, which is just one of these upper level keys, like momentum key, stochastic key, okay? And then once we're in here, we want to loop through the columns of that dictionary according to that key that we're on, all right? Because most of each key, for each period, we're going to populate multiple columns of data. So now we need to loop through those columns. So we'll do that by doing this. For k in list, uh, list of uh, dict list i, j. All right, so what are we doing here? So, so dict list i, j. So i is, is the actual element. So one of these, or stochastic, or Williams. And then j is going to be some key inside that one. So the keys according to, for instance, if we're on Williams, this is basically going to give us all of the columns inside the Williams dictionary corresponding to the jth key. All right? I know that's kind of complicated, but just look at it for a while, stare at it, and you'll understand. And so now what we're going to do is create the column ID for this uh, element. And so the column ID is going to be the column feature plus string of J. Okay, so that's going to be a number according, uh, and J is going to be whichever key we're on, we're looking at, and then plus K. And K is the name of the column. So for instance, when we go inside the Bollinger uh, dictionary, we're going to have the name Boll or Bollinger, and then uh, 15, which is the period that we're doing it for, and then K. Now, K's can be either upper, mid, or lower, since we have three Bollinger bands for each period. So it's so this is going to create three different column IDs. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set master frame um, column ID is equal to dict list. And now I, J, K. Okay, so that's how it's indexed. Uh, and this took me a long time to develop how to figure out how to do this. But that is it. Now, at the end of all this looping nonsense, we should have a completely populated master frame. Now that we have the master frame, we need to address a couple issues. And one of the issues is that we will have NAN values in our data frame. And for machine learning, we do not want these NAN values. So one thing that I'm going to introduce is something called the threshold. Okay? So the threshold is is going to be is I'm going to say 70% of the length of the data frame. So let's do that really quick. So we'll do round and we'll do 0.7 for 70% times the length of the master frame. So this is going to be a number according and it's going to be a rounded number that is approximately 70% of the length of the data frame. And so what we're going to do later is we're going to say if a column does not have threshold number of actual value, number values, then we're going to just get rid of that column completely. So basically we're setting a threshold saying if we don't have this amount of data that's clean, then we're going to get rid of it. So next I'm just going to go ahead and, and rename, or I'm going to set master frame to also have the price data in it. So we're going to set some new columns by doing this. So we'll go up here, open, high, low, close, ask volume. la di da da set that right here. And actually, we don't need to ask volume, so let's just get rid of that guy. And then we'll say that one is equal to prices of the same column.
columns. Oh, sorry, I am kind of being dumb right here, so we'll just right here, like that. Okay. Alrighty, and then another issue that we need to address. Haiken Ashi is resampled, so it has... Um, it, this means that it's going to have empty data data in in between. So what that means is that for our Haikanashi, if you don't remember, we resampled it to 15 hours. So that means that for a it's going to have it's going to line up with our other data, but for 14 hours in between each Haikanashi candle, it's going to be a NAND value. So what we want to do is we want to just backfill all those NAND values. So what we're going to do is master frame and we're going to get that that uh, column that we named through this loop, which will be hiking 15 um, open, and that is going to be equal to master frame dot hiking 15 open dot fill na, and we're going to use the backfill method. Okay, and we're going to do this for all of the other Haikanashi. Uh, high, open, low, close. So, all right, now that we have all of those, we are going to go ahead and we are going to drop all of the columns that do not meet this condition here. So, drop columns that have 30% or more NAN data. Okay? Because 30% is going to be the opposite of 50 or 70%. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to call it master frame cleaned. Master frame cleaned is equal to. That way we have two different master frames, uh, and we're going to just say we're going to create it master frame dot copy. That way we have a copy just in case something goes wrong and we don't lose any anything. So now. What we'll do is we'll say master frame cleaned is equal to master frame cleaned dot drop na and we'll say axis is one so this is the column axis and we'll say thresh thresh and this is is equal to threshold okay so that will drop the columns that do not meet this threshold requirement which is what we want and then we will drop our there's going to be NAND data for like the first uh, so uh, however many uh, rows of data at the top and at the bottom so we want to drop those off as well so master frame cleaned is equal to master frame cleaned dot drop na axis is equal to zero so that's going to drop off data that we don't care for alright and now that that is all completed let us write it to a CSV file so that we can do it, uh, we can have uh, access to it later uh, Later on. So what we'll do is we'll say master frame cleaned dot to CSV um, and we will put it in the data folder um, and we'll call it master frame dot CSV. All right, and then let's just say complete completed feature calculations. All right, so if all goes well, I'm gonna go ahead and run it here. Let's say a prayer to the uh, rain gods that it works. Okay, looks like we just had a simple error here. Oh, okay, so this is what I did wrong here. Up here I said data.columns. What I meant to do is say data is equal to data indexed by this, so that we're effectively dropping off the date column. That was a small error. Hopefully there's no more. There's yet another small error that I found here, and this one's actually really dumb. So in this loop here, uh, you'll see here it says can only concatenate list, not string to list, and that's because in here I accidentally set the whole, like, the whole string, or the whole list of column features. What we really want is column feature i. Okay, so hopefully that was the only dumb error. I mean, there, that's two now. So, two dumb errors in counting. Let's run it again. 
guys, well, it just finished, but real quick, I'm going to let you know that there was another error. And yeah, so that brings our error counter to three, which is par. So we're still on track here. So I'm going to tell you where that error was. And it had to do with the index of the Heiken Ashi candle data frame. And that's because in feature functions, when we, or when we resample the data, which is right here, we created this new column called symbol. And so that, that basically created, a, when we grouped it, it made a multi-index data frame, which we didn't want. And if you remember in a, many videos ago, when I created the Heikenashi candle data frame, I put a line in there that I said, we won't need this until later. Um, and that line is this one right here. So we ended, uh, originally had put it in, commented out, and it was this drop level. Okay, because that's what we want to do. We want to drop the zeroth level, which is the symbol index level. So after you add this line or uncomment it or whatever you need to do, and this is in the Heikenashi uh, function file, then it should work completely properly. So as you can see here for my output, it went through and it completed all of the calculations. So I'll just open it up to show you guys what it looks like. And you see here the file <laughs> exceeds the limit, but you know it's a huge data frame that we just created. So as you can see here, this is the result of that loop that we made, where it creates the column names, momentum eight close, so this is the eight period momentum close, nine period momentum close, and so on. So if you go through all these columns, I believe there's like 73 columns, I think, or 60, I can't remember how many. But yeah, this is a lot of data that we just generated. All right, so this is what our feature frame looks like. And it is a lot of data to handle. And um, you'll notice if you run this by yourself that the feature collector takes a long time to gather all these features. And if the number of data points goes up and we do like two or three years of data or even more, then we end up spending like 30 or 40 minutes just to collect all these features. So in the next video, what I'm gonna do is show you guys how to leverage the multiprocessing library so we can create a pool of processes that communicate with each other and so that we can access multiple computational cores and complete the process in like a fifth of the time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video in the next video or maybe in a couple of videos down the road we will do that. Um, in the next video I will show you guys how, how to backtest and um, sh to uh, basically simulate trading with these features. Alrighty and um, if you guys have any questions or comments go ahead and uh, ask me below. Um, you also let me know how many errors you get. Maybe you can beat my three errors for this file, which is pretty good. So I hope you guys are having a good day, and I'll see you next time.